So good morning and welcome to our video series, Your Catholic Questions Answered. Uh, my name is Father Paul and as always, let's begin our question and answer session with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. And we ask the grace of the Holy Spirit to enter into our hearts as we answer this question together. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. So thank you, first of all, for this question. It comes to us from one of our teens. And the question is, um, why do some people dedicate their whole life to believe and teach about their religion? Um, so short answer, are you ready? Why not? <laughs> um, so uh, kind of a little facetious, but basically, why not? Um, we'll dive a little bit deeper and go into three kind of points, um, examining this question in a little bit uh, closer way. Number one, like, take a look at the question. Why would someone bother to dedicate their life to learn and teach religion? Um, I think in our society, like, there's this idea that, you know, religion really isn't that important. So why on earth would anyone kind of throw away their life? Or why on earth would anyone waste their life, um, you know, becoming a priest or becoming a nun or becoming a religious sister? Um, if you don't believe me, throw in another profession into the equation, for example, like, uh, why, on, why would somebody dedicate their life to becoming an NHL player? Why would someone become a doctor? Why would someone dedicate their life to becoming a nurse? Why would someone dedicate their life to becoming a pro soccer player? Why would someone dedicate their life to fill in the blank, right? Um, <clears throat> the answer basically becomes, well, because it's important to them, right? And that's why my kind of short answer was, well, why not? <laughs> uh, it is important to us as Catholics, our faith, right? Um, and so it just naturally makes sense that for a small portion of Catholics, um, they feel called, they feel that God really asks them to enter into a deep way um, and serve uh, God and his people as a priest, as a sister, or as a um, nun, or as a religious brother, okay? Now I realize that's not going to be every single person who is Catholic, uh, far from it, but there is a small percentage, you know, of people that are called, in the same way there's a small percentage of people that are called to be a doctor, that feel called to be uh, a lawyer, that feel called to be an NHL player, and so on and so forth, okay? That's the first point. Second point is this, um, I feel like kind of underneath the question, again, a little bit, there's sort of like an idea that religion is not important or maybe boring or not relevant. Um, I would say that's all relative, like non-importance or being boring is relative. Um, here's a good example. I'm passionate about hockey. So anyone that knows me knows I absolutely love hockey. I played it all the time growing up. Um, I still like to play hockey right now. Now, because I'm kind of old and fat, I play a beer league hockey. Um, and I beat up on a bunch of old guys and feel good about myself. Ooh, I scored a goal against 60 year olds, right? Um, I love hockey. Uh, a lot of my friends don't share that love of hockey, um, but they can actually still appreciate a good hockey game, right? So they may still come to me, they, they will still come. For example, if I invite them to an NHL game, why not? They'll come, look at, you caught up in the excitement of the crowd, they like it, but they don't feel called to dedicate their entire life to playing hockey or to become a professional hockey player, okay? Um, realize that in a certain way that's also like a lot of you guys. A lot of you guys um, are called you, 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 to basically to be a good Catholic, to come to mass, to go to the sacraments, but that doesn't mean that um, you're necessarily called to be a priest or religious, right? That's a separate calling in and of itself, okay? In the same way that, you know, everyone can appreciate a good hockey play. Everyone can appreciate a good um, athletic uh, feat. Everyone can marvel at, wow, that was talented. Even if they actually don't really want to be an NHL player in and of themselves, or, you know, everyone can marvel at um, greatness, even while they uh, don't want to necessarily do it for themselves, okay? And I know that's not a perfect uh, analogy, but just something to say that, um, you know, you can be a devout Catholic, you can go to mass, you can go to the sacraments without basically um, saying, well, if that's the case, then I'm just gonna become a priest or a nun. Um, if God calls it, you will be, but there's literally millions, actually billions of Catholics um, who go to church every day, who or go to church every weekend, um, who attend all the sacraments, and who have no intention of ever being a priest or a nun because it's not uh, what they wanna do with their life, right? And that's perfectly okay. Third uh, question, uh, you know, third point rather, which you kind of might be thinking about is, well, how do I know if I have like the call? So I remember actually being in a group of guys and like one guy was mentioning like, you know, how he was gonna go to check out to the seminary, like to become a priest. And he's like, yeah, I got the call. 
and we never really asked him what that meant. We were just like, wow, the call. Um, the reality actually I think is for myself as a priest and for many other priests and many other sisters and many other religious brothers, the call is actually really simple. Um, it's very ordinary, at least it was for me. Um, I would kind of compare it in a sense to having a crush on someone. So you see this really cute girl, you see this like amazing guy, you just have a moment where you're like, wow, I, I kind of like, there's a connection, right? Um, you want to get to know them better. It just starts really kind of organically and then maybe it gets more serious and progresses over time. That's like a calling, you know, a vocation um, to maybe to be married um, and stuff like that, right? A vocation to the priesthood or religious life as a, as a priest, as a sister, as a nun, as a religious brother is similar. It's kind of like, at first you're just kind of like, oh, that was kind of cool. Maybe I could be a priest or maybe I could do the same things or I like helping people out or, you know, I've always liked uh, being at the maps, like whatever it might be, just something really, really super small at the beginning. Maybe something like really superficial, like, wow, I like like the fancy vestments or like whatever, right? It could be something really small and maybe even something that you might think is not that important or not like really worthy. Kind of like that first sort of, um, you know, uh, crush you get in someone. It might be something totally superficial, like it could be something they're wearing or it could be their eyes or whatever. It could be something fairly superficial and over time it grows. Similar to, with a vocation, you know, calling from God. At first it could be something very, very superficial and then over time, if it's real and if it's from God, um, it will grow and eventually you'll purify that intention and it will become more and more uh, solid and concrete, okay? Um, just as a quick, you know, reminder, don't get so caught up in like, the stereotypical priest or the stereotypical nun, um, what kind of person or character they have to be, they're actually, it's a myth, it's a stereotype. None of that exists, okay? Um, in my case, for example, I grew up playing a lot of hockey. I studied mechanical engineering in university. And uh, in my final years of study, I started thinking about, hey, uh, maybe I could become a priest. And from that just random thought popping in my head, it actually grew kind of just organically, naturally to the point where um, yeah, when I finished schooling, I literally went to the seminary to become a priest. Um, that was something I struggled with all the time because I kind of thought that a priest has to be like a s different kind of personality, different person. The reality is that there is no ideal candidate or special type of person. God calls whoever he wants. Um, and full disclosure, if you do feel that God is calling you, even if it's something really, really small at the beginning, don't get all caught up in stereotypes or what a priest should be like or kind of character and all that. Don't worry about that. God is in charge. If he calls you and it's a real call, it will happen. All you have to do is listen and follow. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Uh, good question. Thanks so much. Coming from one of our teens from a local high school. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions uh, or comments to this question or any others, please send them in to us. And our next uh, series uh, in this, um, our next video rather in this video series, our pastor, Father Mark, will give you a quick update uh, about what's happening in our parish, St. Catherine of Siena Parish over the summer months and we'll close out our question and answers for the summer and uh, special thanks to all of those who submitted questions and to those who watched and supported the program uh, during this time. God bless everyone and uh, let's ask St. Catherine of Siena to pray for us. Amen.